is that the House of Lords will now resume. Yeah. I remind members that these proceedings are subject to parliamentary privilege and what we say is available to the public, both in Hansard and to those listening. My Lords, the virtual proceedings in the private notice question will now commence. I will call the private notice question in the normal way. I will then call on the Minister to make the initial response. I will then call Baroness Smith to ask her supplementary question in the usual way. The Minister will again respond and I will then call in turn those Lords asking supplementary questions as listed on the speakers list. Please ensure questions and answers are short and I apologise in advance if it is not possible for everyone to be called. Please ensure that you unmute your microphone prior to asking your supplementary question. Your microphone will be returned to mute when you have finished speaking. In accordance with guidance agreed by the Procedure Committee, if your name is not listed, it is not possible to ask a supplementary question, nor take part in the proceedings. Private notice question on COVID-19 PPE, Baroness Smith of Basildon. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. Minister, Lord Bethel. My Lords, the full weight of the government is working at, uh, to get every NHS and care worker the personal protective equipment that they need. A cross-governmental team is working to source PPE from around the globe, drawing upon foreign office and Commonwealth teams, and a global network stood up by the Department for Trade. The armed forces are helping with the logistics. My noble friend, the Lord Dayton, leads the efforts to boost UK PPE production. Baroness Smith of Basildon, supplementary question. I'm grateful to the Noble Lord the Minister. I have to say I was rather surprised he was answering this question because I'm talking about cross-government work and I had expected a Cabinet Office Minister. Can I particularly push him on the issue of procurement policy? He will have heard industry complaints, including from overseas manufacturers, that they've been unable to provide PPE to the UK because the bureaucracy and the hurdles involved in the procurement process. So instead, they're selling their equipment to other countries. There's also numerous reports of small and medium sized manufacturers with the ability and the capacity to produce PPE here in the UK, feeling they've been ignored by the government and their approaches are just dropping into somehow a black hole. Now, I know the Noble Lord's aware that this is urgent. It's been urgent for weeks. It's going to continue to be urgent and the government needs to be fleet of foot and very flexible. Now, we all welcome the appointment of Lord Dayton. But can I ask him, is there one minister with responsibility for PPE, with the authority um, to work across government departments to unlock any um, hurdles there could be or any problems in provision and distribution? If there is, who is that? And if there isn't, why not? Minister Lord Bethel. The Noble Baroness makes a completely fair point. The background is that procurement in the NHS has been lean and efficient and dedicated at choices for local uh, organizations. And therefore a challenge like COVID, which requires a massive four nations international procurement program, requires a different approach. We have stood up that approach and the national, with the NHS supply chain is working with um, officials from all the departments. And I attended Skipton House to witness for myself the amazing work done by that joint procurement team. Jo Churchill is the minister responsible and she is achieving an enormous amount in this area. The Earl of Shrewsbury, supplementary question. Uh, my Lords, is my noble friend aware of a comment which I read recently in an article on BBC News Online, where it was stated that the UK was, I quote, incapable of manufacturing PPE products. Would you agree with me that British manufacturers and a number of others, such as schools, part-time workers, people on furlough and many others are indeed most capable of producing PPE products and to a very high standard? And is he further aware of a recent survey conducted by the Manufacturer magazine where they produced a long list of names, uh, extremely comprehensive and lengthy, from corporate giants such as Ineos, BAE Systems, Dyson, JCB, down to small specialist family-owned manufacturers, and from many different corners of the UK manufacturing family. Minister Lord Bethel, 
I completely agree with uh, my noble friend, uh, Lord Shrewsbury. I completely and utterly reject the suggestion that British manufacturers are incapable in this area. I would, though, um, share with the noble lord that this is a low margin, high volume game. And those low margin, high volume manufacturers are largely found in countries like China, Turkey uh, and Miramar. That does not mean that we can't do local manufacture. We've had 25,000 offers of support from businesses as of yesterday. We are processing uh, those responses. 175 are through to uh, an advanced round, and we have already had three companies deliver goods to the NHS of PPE um, to help our hardworking NHS and care workers. Baroness Barker, supplementary question. Thank you. Has the Department of Health and Social Care raised with the Treasury the issue of care homes having to pay VAT on PPE, which the NHS doesn't? The Noble Baroness raises a good point. I do not uh, know the precise answer to that. I'd be glad to write to her with a clear answer. Minister, uh, uh, Lord Tani of Chiswick, supplementary question. Oh. Lord Well, going to Baroness Ramsey of Catvale, supplementary question. My Lord, I have been puzzled, um, not for the first time, but very much on the PPE distribution question by the UK has always had a system which uh, and a structure of deciding uh, on priorities of threats to the security and well-being of the United Kingdom. And pan pan pandemics have actually been on that list and a very high priority for a number of years. How can it be if that system was functioning as it normally does very well, that we have this problem of distribution and production procurement and distribution of PPE. Is it working? And is it, if the system is not working the way it used to, is that because there's been lack of resources put into it in recent years? Minister Lord Bethel. Uh, the Noble Baroness is right to question uh, the resilience arrangements in this country. Can I reassure her that we do have extremely um, well thought through resilience arrangements? This disease, though, is more infectious than we could have possibly imagined, and the need for PPE is higher than we had originally planned. And we are, um, uh, we do have an, an organisation in the NHS in which efficiency and supply management has been put uh, at, a, at a very high level. However, we have moved incredibly quickly to put in place central supply uh, organisations, and the entire weight of government is. Uh, working hard to ensure that PPE is distributed widely and fairly throughout the system. Lord Balf, supplementary question. Um, thank you, Minister. In the last couple of days, there have been news reports that a PPE package of some company was, and I quote, delayed by the Turkish government. It's also been put to me that the Turkish government is not responsible for any delay in this shipment, which was a straightforward business deal between the NHS and the Turkish supplier. Will HMG confirm that the Turkish government has displayed a constructive role, has not sought to delay the shipment? Will they publicly thank the Turkish government for not seeking to stop or delay, even though they have their own crisis to deal with? Minister Lord Bethel. I'd like to reassure my noble friend, Lord Bath, that we have been in daily and constant contact with the Turkish government, who have behaved with good faith and, and in a supportive fashion throughout uh, all of our dealings, and we are thankful to the Turkish government for their involvement. Lord Patel, supplementary question. Would the noble Lord the Minister agree that we have not done well when it comes to delivery and availability of PPEs? And Nobody as yet has said to anybody, sorry for that. Do you think somebody should? And if I might repeat, slightly rephrase the question of Baroness Smith, which cabinet minister does the buck stop? At whose door does the buck stop as cabinet minister? 
Yeah, Mr. Lord Bethel. I'm I, um, not sure I agree with the noble uh, Baron Lord Patel's uh, analysis. Um, no one could have ex anticipated the huge demands on PPE, not just in the NHS and in care, but also in other, other workplaces. This is a global phenomenon. The chase for PPE is uh, difficult in all countries around the world. Britain is not alone in struggling with this. I don't think now is the time for apologies. Now is the time for delivering PPE, and that's what this government is focused on doing. Lord Hunt of King's Heath, supplementary question. My Lord, can I just declare an interest as president of the Healthcare Supplies Association and thank the noble Lord, the minister, for his tribute to procurement professionals in the NHS and in the supply chain SSCL. My Lord, can I just come back to the issue both uh, Baroness Smith and Lord Patel have raised, which is about cross-government working. It's clear that this is not just the concern of the Department of Health, it certainly involves the Cabinet Office as well. And the question is, is there someone who has the authority in government to make the final decisions? It's not clear at the moment. Minister Lord Patel. Um, Noble Lord uh, asks about clarity. Let me be clear. The NHS is the client. The Department for Health pays the bills. Other departments are doing their bit to help. We are very grateful to the Cabinet Office in particular for providing contract and uh, procurement staff and we are thankful to all other departments who have lent us either their staff or their logistical skills in delivering on our PPE commitments. My Lords, the time allowed for this question has elapsed. My Lords, the virtual proceedings will now adjourn until 1pm for Baroness Wheeler's debate.